Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Tease Time. I'm TJ. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to continue with laying some pipe. We got propane lines, some uh, black iron. Uh, we're about to go over this stuff in a second. <laughs> but uh, I need to get all that stuff ran and plumbed to go to uh, where they're going to live or to their appliances uh, respective location. So uh, the stove will live here. So I made room and I cleared all this off because I do have to move it. I have to figure out where to drill our holes behind and through the floor. Uh, so we can have our uh, shutoff come through with our uh, drip leg. And the same will go for our hot water heater. Uh, so we just have to figure out that's going to probably be the hardest part. Like it looks like it's a lot, but it's really not a lot. It's just uh, a lot of different little pieces. Uh, but I think like the hardest part of this ordeal will be for me to just get the location, like drilling through the floor. Uh, so it's gonna be measuring, going at the bottom, measuring, and uh, just use like, uh, let's say uh, tracers of other things that are on the floor. Like there's other like holes that are in the floor, like for uh, the mounting plates and stuff like that. Uh, so if I find those screws, we could base off our, uh, base our, uh, our measurements off of that and get the hole through but like once we get that set it's just a matter of uh connecting stuff but uh let me give you our little run through over the list of the parts that i have here to do the install so of course we have some propane lines this is a half inch uh, i'm using a hydraulic flaring tool because that's what i have it's a little overboard you don't need to do all this uh definitely gonna need like a pipe cutter a reamer deburring tool you'll need that uh, with these there's a 45 degree angle and it's a half inch and i'm using a cone and that's how i'm gonna flare uh it's been a while since i've uh, flared propane lines i used to help do installs and stuff like that so uh it's not foreign to me it's just been a while uh so of course shutoffs safety both for a stove and for a hot water heater uh some flare nuts a uh, hole saw, of course, to go through the floor. Uh, you need a pipe wrench, some crescent wrenches, a uh, flex appliance pipe right here. This is going to be for the stove and the hot water heater. And for our drip legs right here, or sediment traps, however you want to call them, uh, we're going to have that stuff situated. And then those are going to go through the floor. And hopefully those pipes are long enough, but if not, I could get some more. Uh, they're going to go through uh, the cable clams. So it's like that plus the floor. So I was like, it's probably right there, might be perfect. I might have to get longer ones. Uh, of course, uh, pipe sealing or pipe dope. Uh, something to secure your propane lines to the floor. That's what I have right here. Uh, these should be, what size is that? Uh, for half inch. So half inch, I have some more of these. I ordered more, so if I need to add more, I can. I have a double stage regulator right here. It takes a high, drops it to a low. Uh, you definitely need to size your line accordingly to uh, your appliances. Uh, you need your uh, water column for both uh, the hot water and the stove, and you need your run. So that and then plus what your regulator is pushing out, you just need to make sure each appliance gets the water column that it needs. And then you could test those at the appliances when you have that stuff set up and hooked up just to make sure everything is safe and that the flame will be happy. Uh, so that and of course, drill bits right there bunch of fittings uh for this i'm going to show you how to uh cut i'm going to show you a flare i'm going to show you me assembling uh my uh drip legs or my sediment traps and i'm going to uh find my locations to drill the holes but i'm like i'm not going to show you me actually running everything i'm going to do it like a run through once i have everything installed just to see how everything uh, is ran uh, but you just want to be careful of just uh chafing uh sharp edges and high heat sources uh, but like definitely you need to make sure that you measure uh, the distance that you're running your line because that's kind of what goes to uh, your uh, your copper line because uh, originally I had a uh, three eighths and it wasn't correct I did like my measurement again and I had my water column for uh, that for the hot water heater and the stove and I needed to go to the half inch uh, so everything's been measured so everything is good for what i need it for for it to make its run because there's a pressure drop over the length of the line and the longer the run so the longer the run the bigger the line is going to be uh so uh we're going to get into assembling uh drip legs i'm going to show you how to flare i need to probably do a couple practice uh test uh flares myself because it's, it's definitely been a while so uh that's important so a uh, cut deburr flare and you just make sure you put your uh, your flare nuts on before you flare uh, because then you have to cut it off and redo it. Uh, but having more or a little extra propane line, 
doesn't hurt. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, first things first, for me, I'm gonna go find the location of where the holes in the floor need to be because I need those set first before I put in the propane line. And I do have to tee into it because I have to splice it because gonna have the lines gonna go to the, the first sediment trap and then it's gonna break off of that and go to the next sediment trap. So I have a tee somewhere. The tee is right here for that. But uh, yeah, I need to just figure out the whole location and then we're gonna go from there. That's the important part for this because everything's based off of length and how I'm running it based off of where the fittings or for the sediment traps will live. Uh, so let me find those holes and then we'll get to uh, assembling our drip legs and stuff and we'll get this stuff going. Yeah. All right, so I sent a pilot hole through and I let the drill bit in there so we could go on the bottom and see if that's where we need it to be. And the hole is small enough, like if it was a wrong spot, we could just uh, put some silicone in there, block that back off. Uh, but it should be good where it's at. Uh, so let's go check. Make sure we didn't drill into, drill into anything important like the propane tank. All right, and that's where it is in relation to the propane tank. So the drip leg will sit here. There'll be enough room to get the tank filled right there. Uh, but we're gonna come down. I'm gonna have my uh, drip leg. I'm gonna have the propane line going that way. Uh, so we're gonna have the line come out from the regulator, cut back. It's gonna tee, and it's gonna keep going straight to the back uh, for the hot water heater. But uh, that's one hole. I'm pleased with that location. Uh, now let's go find the other hole or the other location for the hole to be drilled for the hot water heater. All right, and we have the pilot hole drilled for this going through. Let's go check on the bottom to see if it's in the correct spot. I just wanted it on a, in a rib where it was flat. Uh, I wanted it kind of over on this side, uh, but it didn't look like it made sense when I was measuring. So let's go check to see if my measures were uh, somewhat correct. Okay, so there it is. That should be good. Actually, let me grab one of those gla glands just so we can see. Yep, and that should work out good. Okay, cool. So now we just need to go uh, put a hole through the floor for this and then the glands we actually uh, have rubberized gaskets, as you can see. Uh, you drill a hole for your pipe to go through, so I need to drill like an inch and a half through this. And then once you actually tighten everything down, it will compress this to go around the pipe so that it makes a nice watertight seal and around the screw holes also. So I just have to actually clean that once I get my hole in, uh, go and scrape all that dirt, make sure we got a nice clean surface uh, to mount this to. So we got our holes through the floor. Right now we got to drill a hole through our little gland right here. Uh, there's actually like a little divot. I don't know if you can see it for like the center, uh, but I do have a hole, a uh, center punch. Uh, this is scrap wood I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take this, mark that up with the center. Oh, well, oh, well. Oh. All right. All right, so I had to readjust and use a different hole saw. The one I was using was too small. I was using a 20 millimeter, I needed a 22. I'm using an inch and a half or a half. What, what size? <laughs> what size is this that I'm using? I am using, yeah, half inch. Yeah, <laughs> half inch. I got this stuff so long ago, it's uh, a little blank, but uh. A half inch, I used a, a 22 millimeter hole saw. It went through the rubber good enough. Doesn't have to be perfectly center, but it does need to go through and be snug. And there goes the screw. And to mount this, 
Uh, you go at the bottom of your vehicle, you mark your holes. Uh, there's four mounting holes, so that will mount to it like that. And then this right here, well, you will take that. This is mounted to, let's say if that's mounted to the floor, uh, you will take your rubber gasket and you will line it up. Well, actually, you could line, you line it up with the holes that you have to drill into the floor to mount the base. And then once that is on, you take this, you put it on, you match up the holes where there's already like the screws in there. Uh, send your bolts through that and snug it. And that will be it. That will be sealed up. That'll be ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to go make another one of those. And then we'll get to uh, putting that in. And then once like the stub outs are in, that's pretty, uh, it's just a matter of just running stuff. Uh, adding uh, pipe dope to the black tees, the fittings going from the black iron to uh, the half inch uh, propane lines. But uh, let me get the other one drilled. Let's get those mounted. Uh, once those are mounted, and I'm just kind of a little concerned with, a little concerned with whether or not the this pipe is long enough to make it through so it goes like so it's like that and this is the floor that I drilled out minus there's another little piece here we go that I drilled out of the floor so that sandwich that Big Mac right there like into the floor that's like perfect uh so the only problem i'm gonna have the difficulty that i will have is actually uh getting uh the shut off on there because you need either two people one person at the bottom holding uh this together because this is going to be like that this is our drip leg uh having like a pipe wrench on here or a crescent around that uh somewhere snugged and then i have to do my shut off on top you just have to make sure this keeps this from spinning yeah <laughs> so that's going to be a challenge if you can't find anybody uh mechanically inclined enough to uh hold this and tighten to understand what you're trying to do uh but yeah it should be enough of room it should be enough to get that in and then the shut off will sit up on top this is a shut off this will sit on top like that that'll be the top of the floor and then we have this holes to go through the appliances. Uh, I might need a longer piece for uh, the stove because it's a little higher and just where the placement is, but uh, that'd be plenty enough for the hot water heater. Uh, but let me get this mounted and uh, let me stop running my mouth. <laughs> Let's get this going. All right, so before we attach the gland, the glade, whatever you want to call it, the ceiling component on the bottom of the van, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach our sediment trap. So uh, what you're gonna need, a pipe wrench, of course, pipe wrench, some dope or pipe sealant right here. I'm gonna keep it in here, assemble it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is gonna go a T. There's gonna be a drip leg. Where, where? Like so. And then like so. So this is how we attach our propane. Uh, so the purpose of a sediment trap is to catch if there's any debris. Uh, so uh, in theory, a uh, gas is coming in through here. It'll hit this wall. And if it's heavier or dirt, it should hang out in this area. And if need be, you could take this off. You could get it out, just put it back on. And then this part on top. So this is feeding. To our hot water heater and then we have a shut off this would be on the inside of the van like so 
So uh, that's the finished product when it's assembled. Uh, but pipe wrench, like this is gonna go on last. Uh, so the only thing what I'll have to do at the bottom of the van, I plan on taking a crescent wrench, putting it like so, and wedging it in between those ribs that are on the bottom of the van to hold it in place, and uh, just uh, tighten this up top with the other crescent wrench. So while we have it off the van, it's easier to assemble instead of laying on the ground right here. So you stir it up and make sure you have a prop appropriate uh, pipe sealant that's made for uh, pressurized gas, propane. You should be able to read through the description and it should tell you. Uh, just make sure you're being safe, especially like if you haven't done anything like this before. Uh, propane is something you don't want to play with. Water you could chance, like it'll leak, uh, but you don't want to blow yourself up. So I definitely uh, pay attention and double check, double check everything you do. Uh, actually, whenever I get like gas or uh, propane put into uh, the propane tank, you want to do a leak test before you do everything and usually let it sit for like 10 minutes to see if there's any pressure drop. Uh, there's a allowable amount, but I prefer not to see any amount of drop in pressure. We don't want any leaks. Uh, so yeah, so that and then also your water column, of course. Uh, but just making sure this is stirred. And make sure it's mixed. It's been sitting. So, uh, it did have a little bit of separation in there. Uh, but yeah, just uh, be careful with propane. You don't want to play with this if you haven't had any experience with it, especially. Uh, don't play with it. I have. I've done all this previously before in my history of employment and jobs and things that I do. So it's not foreign. It's just been a while since. But what I do... Start from the top. And do your best not to get it. Whoa, that's a little too much. You don't want it to be inside the pipe at all. A little messy <laughs> but it's assembled it's done uh, we'll have plenty of space to get this up through the floor but uh yeah it'll get neater as I go uh, this has been years and years and years ago so uh yeah just uh, keep going keep assembling uh, clean in between if you can uh, wear some clothes you don't really care about because you will uh, destroy some clothes uh, so yeah, just be mindful of that. Alright. Alright, so you put this ring on first. There's a gasket on the other side. That makes that water tight and those screws aren't gasketed. Uh, you see the oddball one? I rounded one of the screw heads, so I put that in. It's uh, zinc coated. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> let's continue on. So you put this on. Take the screw. And there's some nuts already on the back side of that. So you just put this up, you line up. Get one started. Get the opposite one started. Get the other two. And then you're just gonna evenly snug this down until it is tight. 
All right, I'm gonna leave that somewhat loose until we get like the actual propane line on there. Uh, just so I have some uh, room to wiggle because once I tighten this all the way down, that rubber gas will probably prevent this from actually uh, being able to rotate. Uh, so we're gonna leave that right there. I plan on aiming for uh, this hole right here so that way it'll come and snake up under here and we're it's wrapped and i'm gonna wrap it again in like either like some uh coolant holes just to make sure it doesn't shave and then we're also going to make sure that we definitely uh like uh clamp that down secure it so it doesn't move uh but that's one down i'm gonna go do the same thing for the other side and then we're gonna play a game of connected dots and before i do that let me show you how to flare a flare fitting all right so let's get into a flare a 45 degree flare so you have your copper you have this annoying sleeve but it helps protect it uh, I went for the sleeve just for uh, extra protection but for uh, to get it off got to be careful because you don't want to actually like cut into the copper itself right and a couple more marks I don't know if you saw that I did a razor blade straight down um, you see how the edge is jagged? Do not use the first edge that comes off. Cut that off, get a clean edge. Uh, take your pipe cutter. Around, around, and around until it is cut. Just take your time, don't apply too much pressure. And this is the test piece because I haven't flared in a long time either. So we're going to see how it goes. And I haven't used the hydraulic flaring tool on uh, propane lines. I've used it on like brake lines. And it's very easy. As long as you have the right fittings. <laughs> Alright, so you take that. Take your deburring tool. Deburr. like so that sediment trap will come in handy uh, when you do you take your flare nut now, this is the important thing don't forget to throw this on for demonstration purposes I'm not going to or am I throw your flare nut on if you forget you have to take it off especially like if you cut it like exact two size of what you're trying to install uh you can waste a lot of copper that way uh but here's my hydraulic flaring tool uh right here we have our half inch 45 half inch 45 degree inverted our plunger throw that on like so and now the trick is to get the right depth and when you have your copper line in here so this is where the practice piece comes in uh, so if anything you want it flush with the top so right here I believe And this is what I have. See how I have it level right there? This is the first one. I believe that's where it's supposed to be. So then you just tighten this up to the point of it makes contact. Like so. Tighten your valve. And then we pump. Make sure that's tight. pump until it feels that resistance and then release the valve that backs out 
we tighten it back and let's see what we got Test for our fitting. And yeah. So we're good. Right, and as you can see, see how it sits in there? Uh, that's what you want. If anything, I'll probably go back just a smidge, but like that's great where it is. And then your flare nut should be able to come over that without an issue. And then when you tighten that down, you'll be good to go. So uh, yeah, so it's gonna be easy, it's good. Uh, but I'm gonna get back into assembling uh, the other sediment trap. I'm gonna get that done. And then this will come at a later step in the video yes <laughs> but let me get the other one situated because we got to connect our dots so we need that and also our regulator so dual stage high to a low pressure we got our fitting we need a half inch on here also uh it comes already assembled but you could just back this off just to double check this goes into the propane tank uh, just to make sure that's sealed up it should be i see some uh residue in there uh, so that should be fine uh, check this for leaks if you don't want to check it make sure it's tightened so you don't disturb that uh, but do, put a fitting on here Where is it? i think it's like a three eighths to a half Yeah, it's a three eighth to a half inch pipe thread to a half inch propane line. This here, and that goes into a propane tank. And then we'll run our line off of this and I'll show you. Uh, but let me get all this stuff assembled. Uh, dope this, dope the sediment trap. Uh, you don't need dope on the, the flare nut to this fitting here. You don't need dope on those. Uh, but let me get this stuff assembled and I will... Actually, I'll show you how I have it routed because that'll probably be easier because just recording under the van holding it for the angles and feeding stuff. It's a little difficult. So the best thing I could do is install this and then go through and show you how I have everything routed. Uh, so that is to come. All right, and before I start to run the lines under uh, the van, uh, this is the setup I have right here. This is a shut off. Uh, this is the 3 8 to the hot water heat 3 fitting to a half inch on the black pipe right there. Uh, but what I really wanted to show you is just how I was using the, the pipe wrench or the crescent wrench to keep uh, the fitting in place from the bottom while I tightened it on top. So uh, let me show you that. So uh, this is what I was using, a uh, crescent wrench just up there wedged in between the little reinforcement rib right there. And then I just tightened it from the top. Uh, so, uh, that is still adjustable. I can still move that. Uh, that's not tight. And then the fittings up top aren't tight either. Uh, so that way I have, uh, something to play with when I'm, uh, getting this situated. But I'm just going to cap that off that end, cap off the other end, uh, for now, just to keep bugs and dirt from flying in there while you get stuff routed. And when you run the, the copper line, there's a, it comes with plugs. Uh, keep the plugs in there just to keep, uh, stuff out of it while you're feeding it through. Cause it will pick up dirt and just be cautious of that but uh let me get this stuff ran and i'll show you how everything run and bada boom bada bing the lines are installed it's in it's finished or as finished as we're going to be for this video i just wanted to get the lines installed to this point i still have to do a pressure test uh i still need to get the tank filled 
Uh, so we can't really do a test unless I put like an adapter in line and use like a bicycle pump or something to put some air pressure in there. And I could check for leaks. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how everything ran. There's our double stage regulator right there. It comes around and around. Uh, we have a T right here. Uh, this tea right here this feeds the oven the stove where that will live uh this stuff is still kind of loose because i do have to cut a hole in here to gain access so that we could get the tank filled uh so that way i could take this off and get that out the way but whenever i get the hole cut then i'll actually use clamps to get this stuff mounted so it doesn't move and then we have it run up through the ribs coming out the other end of the rib and it goes towards the back. I do have these mounted. Uh, it's secure, it's not going anywhere. And I use the isolated little uh, wire ties. Uh, those are stainless steel just to prevent chafing. And you do need to just be careful and mindful when you do have it run through, like right here, you have, you have these edges. So I have the clamps in place so that these don't make contact. So you don't want these rubbing through. You don't want to leak in the line. That would be very bad. And then the same right here. So it feeds up through, there's no contact. Uh, that's all good. Uh, let me go show you our rear section. It goes out to our hot water uh, heater. That's the last piece that it attaches to. Uh, yeah, let me crawl on the other side. All right. So it comes from the front, comes towards the rear of uh, the water lines. Those still need to be attached. We're still getting that situated. Water side will be done while water tanks and stuff are coming. Uh, but the line comes through up through another set of ribs and also just let me be repetitive uh, make sure you don't have contact with the copper line with any metal or anything that's going to rub through it and make a leak and we have it coming around there's extra slack so if there's ever like an impact in here and this breaks away has a little bit of give because i was going to mount it like right here but i didn't think that was like the best bet or when i was routing it i should have went around the back side which i didn't so it's too late for that. We already have it in. And then the same thing right here, make sure you don't have contact. And then it runs up under. Use as many clamps as you need to make sure there's no metal to metal contact or metal to rubber, the isolated yellow sleeve that's on there. You don't want anything to rub through. So everything is not making contact. Everything is floating and it's stiff. And this is the final connection back here. This is where the hot water heater is right here. And this is like the final connection. And just like I said, make sure nothing is making contact. It has some give, some free play. And when you are using uh, like half inch uh, copper lines, it doesn't bend as easy as like three eighths or smaller. Uh, so just have to be mindful of that when you're doing your bends, like your 90 degrees, because you can kink that. And if you kink that, you're going to have to replace that because it's not allowing the gas to flow. So keep that in mind. And let me get from under here and I'll show you my shutoffs. All right. And this is the shutoff we have going to our hot water heater right here. We have our shutoff on and off. You still use that. There's no interference with that. And for the stove... And for the stove, the stub out is right there. As you can see, I still need to make a hole in the cabinet like here and also here to attach the stove whenever I get to that point. Uh, stove will come after paint, uh, but I just want to get everything on the bottom, the underside of the chassis done. A little quieter. Everything under the van done and complete just because it's the hard stuff that I have actually left. It's just running the lines. So like now that the lines are run or at least ran till they're easily accessible, should be a lot easier now. Like all that crawling is just very tedious. That's why I didn't record like every step of me like doing the run and install and using the flaring tool, but I did show you how to use it. But um, yeah, it's the stuff that's out of sight, out of mind, uh, that matters the most. Like those propane lines, that's probably the most vital part of this build, like safety wise, other than the electrical where like it could be a hazard if you don't know what you're doing so if you don't know if you're unsure do not do it yourself so with that being said be safe and until next wednesday until next wednesday be mindful of the things that you can't see be loyal be royal be golden keep winning 
Be right here and here. Peace, TJ.